Hello everyone, this is Attila Gabriel Brniski from the Gameology Podcast and Bluish Green Productions. I'm here to just talk about what can only be described as the genius of Pokemon tile sets. Specifically, these tile sets are from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, this is the Shoal Cave, uh, for those of you not familiar, and let's just take a look at um, these huge environments that were created for this game. Uh, honestly, obviously these games um, had to fit on a Game Boy Advance cartridge, which did not hold anywhere near as much space as today's uh, modern, like, SanDisk or compact USB chips. So how on earth did they fit these huge environments into such a small space, especially when you consider that they also have to have character sprites and all the Pokémon on there? Well, they did so with the assistance of tile sets. So, uh, here is a tile set that I've dissected from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire in uh, an attempt to create my own sort of version of it. Uh, over here we have the original tile set in the game. That entire cave can be built uh, using just these tiles. So how, how do they create an environment as varied as this with just this tiny batch, this tiny subset of tiles? Well, they do that by having them broken up into pieces that can be repeated side by side. So if I were to create um, like this this sort of out outcrop of rock here is created by this same tile laid side by side but each one of these tiles can be laid next to each other and they line up perfectly. The edges of this one line up with uh, this edge of this one lines up with it, another edge of that one and likewise we have here uh, they have to line up with the corners as well uh, I'm sure anyone who's super familiar with Ruby and Sapphire recognizes this rock. So this rock is actually built of the four corner tiles of this set. So again, there's a great uh, trick that they use to save on space by just having, um, making it so that these tiles line up with each other. They can create this rock asset, which also comprises the outer corners of this sort of chunk of terrain here. So you can see, no trickery, I'm just going to grab those tiles and they create that very distinct looking rock. That means that not only do these these tiles have to line up with each other, they also have to line up with these sort of uh, corner pieces. Um, which means that the artists had to be really careful when they were designing them so that they line up with both other versions of themselves and also with the corner pieces. So again, just excellent job by the art team on that. Uh, you can see that they can create as many slopes as they want in the game just by layering these next to each other. So the edges of these line up perfectly. Um, they also have to agree with the tiles that uh, these are called uh, inner corners where um, you couldn't just put a tile going sideways here like this uh, against a tile going like this way. Uh, without it not looking correct, so that's where these corner tile pieces come in. They help these two edges to meet nicely. Uh, however, when you're going the opposite direction, that's exactly what they do. If you're creating a set of tiles where you have uh, this kind of structure going on, let's create a floor here, uh, they don't need any inner corners for this to line up properly. So let's find an example of that. Uh, down here, you can see that this is a little enclosed space. They have an inner corner down here and on this side as well, but not on the side that's sort of facing away from the camera, I guess is how you'd phrase that. The one place where they really went for broke were these doors, which are very large and actually occupy um, sort of a three by three space here. But again, the way that this tile set is created is I I'm sure this is not how it's actually stored in the game's memory, because if you look, um, this piece, you can see that this, this uh, tonal shape here is the exact same as this shape up here, and that this shape here, this piece, is the exact same as this piece down here, and both of those are in fact identical to this piece of tile. Um, you can see this half of it is this half here, and this half of it is this half here. So I'm sure there was further optimization and trickery, digital trickery going on to compress all that asset um, data together to make sure that it takes up less than the space. Because otherwise it would seem ridiculous that a single um, a door tile like this should have to take up uh, full, well, um, 
just because of this tiny little three pixel like arrangement here that it would have to take up that much space but you can see that agrees with this edge here so there's definitely something going on that they used to make this all work together and it just creates a very distinct looking doorway now another place where they used uh, just absolutely ingenious pixel compression techniques are in the cities so if we look uh, these uh, path tiles um, they don't actually use inner corners so when a path uh, has an edge like here there's a clear like rough edging to the tile that uh, makes this like a nice outer corner and then there's the top part of the tile here and the side part of the tile here but if you zoom in way further than you ever would be able to in the game you can see here's this one little pixel which its color doesn't agree with the sort of outermost edge of these tiles this should be like a darker uh sort of orangey color like on like this sort of beige color and that's because this tile right here is actually just uh the sort of same tile as is being used to construct the entire rest of this path and then again if you look at the path you can see that the entire thing is just built up of this repeating pattern so I'm willing to bet that this tile that I'm out sort of encircling here is not even a uh, 16 by 16 tile. I bet it's just an 8 by 8 tile, and they have this blank one here, and then this pattern on top, which they overlay in repeating fashion. So this entire sort of path tile is created by just having a set of outer edge tiles. And again, um, they didn't cr they didn't have to create unique tiles for the outside edges of all these. This tile right here, the outside of that, is distinct from this one here. You can see that this edge coloring is distinct from this edge coloring here. But this tile, this outer tile here, is the same as this outer tile here. So they're actually possibly using rotation to make it so that this asset here is reused as this bottom corner here. In the same way, if we look at these pathing tiles, this shape you can see matches up with this shape over here so either they are using rotation to dynamically alter the sprites in the game or they just save some time in the development of the assets by flipping them and rotating them um, it's hard to say whether it was uh, whether the Game Boy Advance was necessarily powerful enough to perform all these uh, sprite transformations or whether they are just um, compressed in memory that way so overall uh, the pieces uh, that go together to create these towns, um, again, like this, this, the roof of this house will be constructed of a corner here, a corner here, and then this entire chunk of the roof is just repeated sections. So overall, it's just incredible to see uh, the power of using a tile set like this, and then the overall high-level tricks that they are able to use when constructing a game like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this more visual look at um, the ingenious tiles of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire and I'm sure I was looking at Ruby Sapphire specifically because I really like the look of this game but I know that every single game in the series employs similar tricks and it would be I think a really fun exercise to try and find some of these yourself. I found these tile sheets on the Spriters resource. I was also able to find like all the move tiles that they were using uh, in the game and uh, I think it's important to try to keep some of these practices in mind because there it, it also makes it really easy to just rapidly build out an environment when you have tile sets that work together like this you don't have to have different different tiles that you use here and here just so that they agree with your corners so overall it's a useful practice you can use it to create assets like this one um, without having to create separate stones that, that serves the decoration so it's just a great thing to keep in mind, especially if you're working uh, as an independent developer such as myself. Um, creating one good tile sheet is worth, you know, so much more than a tile sheet that would have been twice as large and not had as much utility as this one. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at the tile sets of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. And if you like this visual-based episode, you should definitely check out the Gameology podcast, which you can find on my website, bluescreenproductions.com. Thanks a lot for watching.